What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our coverage of Steve Jackson's Sorcery. So if you've never heard about it, back when I was a kid, there were a lot of, like, adventure novels and choose-your-own-adventure type things. And now that we have, like, crazy video games and stuff, those have sort of fallen out of favor. I don't even know if they exist anymore. I hope that they do because they ate up a huge amount of my time. And when you got into choose-your-own-adventure novels, you could get even further into it, and they would become, like, single-player RPGs that you would play out of a book with, like, dice and everything else. Well... Steve Jackson's Sorcery, as people tell me, is one of those, and I've been playing for a couple of hours now, and I had a really, really good time with it. Figured I'd cut a couple of episodes, because I was impressed by what it had to offer. It's a simple game, but the story is fun, it's very lightweight, you're meant to die a lot and just keep replaying over and over and over again. Some things are the same each time, but I've noticed there's a small variance every now and again when you, like, go through areas, like, different things can happen. Very, very interesting little game, and so I wanted to cover it at least. I doubt we'll survive more than one or two episodes, like, seriously. Your average playthrough, I think I've died like four times and I've played for two hours. You die a lot. This is one of those old school games, like one of those 1980s, 1970s RPGs, where the player is really at a disadvantage and you're just a human in a world full of like magical shit that's really, really good at killing you. I'm going to do my best to explain how the game works as we go along. There's a lot of little things in this game as long, and there's actually a lot of metagame you've got to know too when it comes to spell casting. That being said, I'm going to miss some things, but it's still a really, really fun little game. So let's check out Steve Jackson's Sorcery. Part 1, The Shamutanti Hills. i got to choose our adventurer. She's kind of badass. Usually I just go with aesthetics, but I'm caught in a weird situation right now where both characters look pretty awesome, but I think she looks more awesome, because they both have like a roguish thing going on, like a roguish Lord of the Rings type deal, but she's a little bit more piratey, so I think I'm gonna be a pirate. You have walked the wilds of Kakabad, through Karay and the spiteful backlands all the way into Mampang. You have survived traps, thieves, serpents, and vengeful gods, and now it is here, the Crown of Kings! It is said the crown was never forged, only found by Chalana the Reformer, a lowly foot soldier who became emperor of the Eastern world. Such is the power of the crown. The air around it crackles with influence. Let's take it. Be greedy! I mean, it's what we came for, right? Your destiny awaits. With the crown in your hands, you will be as powerful as Chalana. The goblins are arming, the giants are waking, and the birdmen are carving cruel daggers from stone. War will come, but you will prevent it. But then the image of the crown begins to flicker. You rush forwards. It's a tarp! And then you startle yourself awake. You are alone, exhausted in the little hut in the outpost settlement. Your unimaginable journey is not even a single step begun. Alright, so that's what our figurine looks like. We are on top of the world map right now. You can zoom out if you want and take a look at it. As you can tell, there is a big, big adventure in front of us. You want to know the furthest I've ever made it? Here. This is the furthest that I've ever made it on the map. I made it that far and I was so proud of myself and then I got my brains crushed with a club. It sucked. You are going to get, just ignore Anal Land. Nobody pays attention to Anal Land. It's unfortunately named, it's the Uranus of the lands on our map. So we're just gonna, just make the jokes as you want to, but there it is, it's Anal Land. Gotta kick on our, or we gotta click on our character to get started here. It is sunrise, you dress, breakfast on, or breakfast on bread and goat's milk and collect the pack and sword from beside your bed. Test the blade. You pause to test the blade against your thumb. The blacksmith has done well, and the edge is keen and draws a narrow line of blood. Outside the hut, you hear the outpost settlement stirring into life. I told you to test the blade, not commit thumb seppuku. Pray for luck. Help me adventure, Jesus. Taking a moment more, you close your eyes and raise a prayer to your spirit guide. This morning, it has the form of a panther, but what will it become once your journey truly begins? A great calm descends upon you. Time then to depart, you lift back the flap of the hut and step into the early morning sunshine. 
All right. And the game is very, very simple. You take your character and you just drag where you want to go and you can walk all over the place and have adventures. But the good shit is always going to be at the blue flag, so that's where we're headed. Eyes follow you as you leave the hut and walk towards the great Shamutanti wall. The frontiers people of this tiny settlement are well aware of your mission. Hello, townsfolk! You turn to them and bow. Some people smile in reply, but most are too afraid to approach. Others make gestures of protection. You are going well beyond the wall, so they believe you to be cursed. A man is waiting on the path to the Cantapani Gate, the final doorway between Aniland and the wilds of Kakabad. You recognize the sergeant of the Sightmaster Warriors. He holds out his hand. Greetings, Sergeant. Greetings. He touches his forehead with two fingers. You're almost ready, milady, he says. I have a gift for you from the king. Twenty-four gold pieces. It's all we can spare at this time. He holds out the pouch. I will take it. Never turn down gifts from the king. He might take offense to it, and then he's going to have us drawn and quartered before we even go on our adventures. Everything kills you in this game, so I just wouldn't risk it. You accept the gift graciously. Thank you. You should buy some supplies before you pass the wall, the sergeant says, and you must collect your spell book if you wish magic to aid you. Finally, should you wish to practice your sword play, I will go one last round with you, and he points with his staff towards the training ground. Let's go get our spell book first. The spell book is one of the more unique experiences in this game, and I'll show you how it works in just a minute. One of the huts, set slightly aback from the others, is decorated with glyphs and strange symbols. A terrible smell emanates from its doorway. This is the hut of the chief mage. He's been preparing your spell book for days, reading star charts to work out which spells will be available to you in the different locations in the hills and beyond. You lift the flap and go inside. The mage looks up at you with haggard, sleepless eyes and presses the book into your hands. You understand how to use this? Yes. The mage nods. Good. He scratches absently at his ear. Remember, some spells will cost you effort to use, but the ones that don't will not work without a focus, an item of some kind. You'll need to read the book to know what. And so there it is. If we click on our spell book down here, the spell book is really, really cool. This volume contains the 48 spells of the high craft as discovered and passed down from generation to generation of sorcerers from the earliest days of the Eastern world. Each spell is formed of three letters, and each spell will take energy to cast. Furthermore, some spells will fail without the use of particular items or focus focuses or foci or whatever you want to call them, foci. You have six spells for your adventure. Zap. Foth. Law, dumb, hot, and wall. Zap shoots a lightning bolt. Foff does a force field. Law makes, I think, stupid creatures easy to control. Dumb makes creatures dumb and clumsy. Hot casts a fireball. And wall creates an invisible wall. All of these spells are extremely tiring and will cost you three points of stamina. More economical versions exist, though some rely on the caster owning particular items of power. And here you can see all of the crazy spells that you have available. I love like the little tarot card things that they've done. For realsies, there are so many spells in this game. They go on forever. And you can memorize like all of them. And that will be a major part of whether or not you survive. I only know like the basic ones. Zed, this is the most formidable spell in lore but no one knows why. In all recorded history this spell has only been cast once by a powerful necromancer from Throben who was never seen again. Its effects are unknown. The necromancer's notes were found but were crazed and unclear. Treat with extreme caution. Huh. Okay. But yeah, there's all kinds of crazy stuff in this game. You, you can memorize them and if you have the proper items you can do all kinds of good stuff. However, I would leave it alone for right now. Until we get further into the game, yeah, I would say play with a cheat sheet, actually. I'm sure there's a printable. This is, the game has been around forever. Like, not the video game itself, but I assume that this is from back in the day. It seems like a pretty popular game from the way people have talked about it online. And so, I would guess there's probably a cheat sheet somewhere you can print out for yourself. You can't reference your spellbook in combat, though. So, you may want to memorize some of this stuff. For example, DOP opens gates. Big makes you bigger. Walk makes it so I think that it turns a gold coin into a shield for you or something like that, which makes your defense stronger when you're fighting. Some very, very interesting and useful utilities in here when you get further and further into the game. Now, what's available would be dependent on where the moon is. And so what'll happen is when you go into combat, based on the moon, there'll be a first starting letter. And it's up to you to know all the spells that start with F or all the spells that start with W or all the spells that start with D. This is one of those games that rewards you for spending a lot of time memorizing shit, so... Pretty cool stuff. You can also blind cast if you want. Sometimes I just click shit and I hope the best thing happens. It's worked out remarkably well so far. 
Let's go buy some rat ions. Small traders in the settlement supply the site master warriors with weapons, armor, food, and clothing. You go over to the sergeant to or you go over with the sergeant to a stall selling flatbreads and cheese. Two gold pieces per ration, the owner says. Let's can we haggle? You know who I am? I'm Analyn's great new hope, you tell him. The man looks uncomfortable. I know that, but I have to feed my family today, whatever happens to the crown. Alright, let's buy more rations. You check your pack and there's plenty of room inside. I'll take four. Four rations is eight gold pieces, the man says, holding out a hand. We buy them, down goes our gold. You hand over the coins and the man places four rations carefully into your pack. You must be sure you eat every day or you'll suffer, the sergeant tells you, standing at your side. Eating more will give you the extra strength, but it's not really necessary. So you can recover three stamina a day. Stamina is your health, it's your energy, it's basically everything. When it reaches zero, you lose. That's all you need to know. To the training ground! Way better than the training sky, because I'm not so good at flying right now. The walk with the sergeant, or you walk with the sergeant, to the training ground, and he wraps the base of his staff in leather. To begin, the sergeant says, we will practice the stances. First, defend yourself from me. So the way the game actually works is you just click and drag your character, the further over you drag your character, the harder you're going to hit your opponent. Now, your opponent also makes this gambit, and he decides how hard he wants to hit, and whoever hits the hardest actually deals damage, and so it's in your best interest to always go all in if you've got the energy to do so. However, what I prefer to do is if you seat yourself all the way back into the left, you can defend, which will drain his strength and allow you to counter a little bit more effectively without having to go all in, because his stamina will drain from his attack. Defend! The Sight Master is a powerful enemy. By defending, you will receive the minimum damage from any attack that he makes. The Sight Master Sergeant defends himself as well. The round is a stalemate. I will now defend myself, he says. Whatever attack you play will damage me, but a strong attack will use up more power. You should choose a weak attack. Alright, let's do a little weak attack right here. Let's give him a little let's give him a little love tap. Hee haw! You swing with a weak attack, rushing for the Sight Master Sergeant who's defending. A good choice. A stronger attack would have wasted more of your power. I will defend myself again, he says. Alright, in we go with a nice little weak attack. You play a low attack, overpowering the Sight Master Sergeant again, who raises his defense. You played carefully and won that round. Well done. My next attack will be of medium strength, but you will be able to overpower me. To overpower him, we have to do a strong attack, so it's all in. And so there it is, his strength versus our strength. And he is cloven. You play a strong attack, injuring the Sight Master Sergeant once more. He bows. You have finished me. Excellent. No stamina lost. Flawless fighting. You seem to remember the basics, the Sergeant says breathlessly. Good. Care to go another round? Enough training. I know how to play the game. You shake your head. Very good, the Sergeant agrees. But if you wish about in earnest, then I warn you, I will not go easy on you. He indicates the wider yard where there is space for a true match. Well then, I'm never one to turn down a challenge, so let's do this thing. Let's throw down. You head over to the yard to practice a bout of real fighting. The sergeant removes the cloth padding from the base of his staff. Unsheathe my blade! This time I will not tell you my intentions. You will have to read them yourself. Be ready. I actually wish they would move- oh, I can move that up a little bit? I never knew that. That's so much better, because they needed to shrink these down a little bit more, I think. The text is sometimes covered by the little, I don't know, the little paper dolls of whoever's fighting. So just be aware that on occasion it can be in the way. I'm going to defend on the first turn. So he hit with 5.1. The Sight Master bows to you, raises his staff in salute, and takes his position. You drop into a defensive crouch immediately. The Sight Master is not to be trifled with. The Sergeant comes in with a tough blow, balancing his strength and his impact. You escape mostly uninjured. His eyes follow your shoulders. He's probably about to defend himself. A strong hit would be wasteful right now. So let's counter with something small. Time to attack. You sting him with your blade, low and fast, saving your energy. I'll wear you out, you declare. His own weapon is raised in defense and he shows his teeth. He is left breathless, but not seriously hurt. You see his arm grow tense. He is readying for a strong attack. Defense! You drop yourself into a crouch as he powers forward with a cry. It only tires him out. Your sword is coming up, conserving his energy so that his next strike can be strong. Yeah, I wish we could see that right there. That's a little disappointing. I don't know how I didn't notice that. 
His guard is coming up, that's the word. Sometimes you're just gonna have to extrapolate and figure it out, I don't know. The, the text needs to be moved up, preferably, by a little bit. Let's... So he's guarding right now, let's go in with something, let's go in just like a little jab right there. Keep his health going down. Acting quickly, you spike forwards with your sword, mean and vicious. His staff is lifted to protect himself. He shows his teeth. I saw that coming, he laughs, and pushes aside your sword, suffering only a minor wound. He watches your footwork closely. You hear observers in the crowd with murmuring expectation. But do they expect a violent blow from him or from you? Oh, we're going in. It's on now. I don't know if I want to use up all my strength, though. That seems like... Let's let's defend. Let's let's make sh let's defend a little bit and see if maybe. Oh, we both guarded. Okay. You whip up your defenses and he hangs back. I'm so glad we didn't go in with all of our energy right there because it would have tapped us out. Then we would have sat here and get beat on until our strength comes back. You whip up your defenses and he hangs back and watches you return. His eyes narrow in preparation for a great effort. Seven point nine goes out. You hold firm and keep up your defense. He attempts a strong stroke. Well done, he grumbles. Panting from wasted effort, you are largely unhurt. His staff is moving protectively. Let's just go in nice and light. Leaping into action, you sweep low with your blade, low and fast. His weapon is positioned across his body in defense. He grins, he's bruised, but mostly unhurt. He shifts his grip to hold his staff more loosely. He seems to be preparing a simple jab, a chance to overpower him, perhaps. In we go. Relentless, you cut and thrust, keeping him pinned. You rush forward with a deep, heavy slash. But his own move is fast and careful, and he's, to, he's able to parry the very worst of the strike. His breath begins to heave. He is struggling to stay upright. Let's defend. You ready yourself to block as he tries a deep bash, but you duck. Fast work, he grunts. You escape mostly unharmed. Now, all in. Actually, it doesn't really matter if we go all in. Aha! Fainting left, you sweep your sword across his body with powerful force. It is enough to finish him. The sight master throws down his staff. You have me, he declares with a grin. The sergeant is gasping for breath. He bows to you once more. Not bad, he declares, but you need to cover yourself more. The beasts out there will take you apart. As he talks, a nearby healer hurries over with a salve and your health, and the sergeant is quickly restored. Hooray! Let us approach the gate. I don't think we can actually buy anything else here, so... Off we go. I'm gonna take a roundabout approach. We gotta go around the house. You start walking through strangers' houses, they get all grumpy with you. You reach the foot of the mighty gate. It is sealed. The sergeant places one hand on the wood. The gate has been locked for some time to deter raiders, he tells you, but you will have no difficulty. The stars in this place allow the D.O.P. spell to be crafted as he stands back. So here's how spellcasting works. You go in, and it's going to give you a selection of letters and just random consonants and vowels. You can select whatever you want. So I can go with a Z, an A, and like a P if I wanted to cast Zap. Probably won't work out so great because we are supposed to go ahead and do D, O, and P, which unlocks doors. You weave the spell. One by one, the great tumblers of the door begin to creak and groan. Then the hinges turn with a noise like hail on a canvas roof. These gates have not opened since our last champion was lost, the sergeant says. I wish you more luck than he. Perhaps you will even meet him on your travels. I fear that he's dead. Well, the sight master nods, peering at something in the horizon. I believe he's returning, but transformed. I hope you don't meet the same fate. He stands back away from you. Together, you step into the shadow of the wall. One last word, he declares. When you have the crown, find the highest point you can find. We will be watching. I understand. I will not wish you a safe journey to Kare, for the, pay of the way ahead will definitely not be safe, the sergeant murmurs. As he peers into the distance through the open gate, the Sightmaster warriors are selected from birth for their incredible powers of telescopic vision. You can't help but wonder how far he can see. Tell me, what lies ahead? The path leads first to Cantapani, a settlement of traitors, though most are rogues and thieves. You should be there before the sun has reached its peak. From there, three routes lead on to Cristatanti, but no single route is safe. Kakabad is a land of devils, and beyond that? 
I cannot see so far, but once you have crossed the city port of traps, you will enter the backlands. They say that day and night there are controlled by forces other than the sun. And from Kerr too, or Kare, your progress will be watched. It's time for you to go. Striding away, you pass to the gate. The faces of the folk watching your departure revealed the hopes that rest on you in your quest. The early morning air is crisp, and the rising sun paints the slopes in shades of beautiful beauty, or peaceful beauty, concealing the evil that lies ahead. path winds through slopes of wild scrubland. The countryside is deserted and the eerie silence is broken only by the cawing of the occasional crow. There is a spell for hearing what they say, but you lack the equipment it requires. The birds appear to pause in the air to examine you as they pass. Stupid creatures, they pose no threat, so you ignore them. Barely an hour beyond the wall and the air begins to grow foul. It sounds like the air was already filled with something foul. That is to say, the birds. The Shamutante hills are infested with the pestilence of the backland. It saps the energy from your body, leaving you feeling nauseous and weak. Well, if it's already inside of us, I say we keep walking. Not even outside the gates yet, and something's already inside me. This adventure is not going well. It is not a surprise. They warned you of this. You'll grow accustomed to it the longer you're out here, but for the moment, you must be very careful. So we can choose to travel cross-country, or we can choose to go to Cantapani. The choice is really yours. The difference in the journey is that you will either go this way and up if you head off to the right, or if you cut through here, you'll meet up with the road right here and all of the adventures that that entails. So this is one of the first major choices that you need to make. Having played both directions a little bit, they're equally dangerous. You can die instantaneously regardless of which direction you choose. So go with your gut feeling and whatever you think will be most fun. Let's go to the city first because that sounds pretty awesome to me. Another hour passes and you crest a small hillock from the top of which you can see the path continuing downwards into a small settlement of huts. This must be Cantapani. Let's look at the village. From this distance, it's hard to make out much about the town, except that it must be desperately poor. The fields on either side are brown and caked with mud, and the few penned animals are thin and wizened like thirsty vines. No wonder the Sightmaster warriors don't trouble themselves to protect the place. There's nothing here to protect. We can avoid the village or we can go to Cantapani. I'm gonna go to Cantapani. Let's go through. Maybe we'll get ourselves some treasure or something. Of course, if you were scared of a town like Cantapani, then you could not hope to survive in Kakabad proper. You follow the path down into the town. The round huts are made of a hard-baked bright clay, and the roofs are thinly thatched. As you pass, eyes appear at dark doorways tracking your every move. For a moment, it seems like this will be all you see of the town's inhabitants, but then, a villager appears from one of the dwellings and blocks your path. Let's investigate. He is five feet tall. They cannot grow much taller out here because of the poisonous air. He has thick-set arms and thighs and is half-clothed in tattered breeches. His eyes are wild and his long red hair and beard stand out from his face in a wiry tangle. Halt, stranger, he commands. What business have you in Cantapani? I want to buy equipment. He grunts, but you can see he's pleased with the motion he encourages you to follow, taking you through the village to a large hut. Inside, you find that the building is a storage house. A quartermaster somewhat plumper than your guide is seated at a table. Wait to be introduced, I guess. We can stride on over and be brazen. Be like, what's good, bitches? But I, I think that probably won't work out. So I, I don't want to be that guy right now. I don't want to be that guy. Maybe they, maybe they like it when people are cautious and also kind in this city. Maybe it's a city of kindness and kitten love. The lady is here to do business, the villager explains. Get out of here, flea, the fat man replies, getting up from his seat to hustle the villager out. Then he turns to you with a smile and beckons you to sit. Reading, stranger, he purrs. Shall I show you my wares? Please. The man wags a finger. Wait there. He disappears for a moment into a side room. You wait. The merchant returns carrying a large box. For you, he declares, moving his hands as he speaks. I see what kind of client you are. This collection, the very best. Our most strange and interesting artifacts, collected from other travelers who have come this way. He begins to lay the items out in front of you, treating each with great care. You have 16 gold pieces to spend, but is there anything worth your while to buy in this place? Let's see here. There's a leather bag, a jewel, a weapon, a musical pipe, an herbalist potion. Let's consider the weapon. I'm a classical adventurer. What weapons do you have? 
The merchant looks at you carefully, sizing up what kind of customer you are. The kind to place a newly bought dagger against his neck, or the kind to tip him for the quality of the blade. But he must see your honor shining through as he wags his finger once more and then collects an axe and a fine broadsword from another corner of the shop. These are both treasures as well as deadly weapons of war. I'm sure you'll agree. Let's look at the broadsword, the classic weapon of knights. You lift the broadsword. It has ready weight and the cutting edge is sharp. It has clearly been honed by a master craftsman. An exquisite blade, don't you think? He grins. Only six gold pieces. Hmm. Let's take it. It shall be mine, you reply, nodding once. The merchant reaches over and you place six gold pieces into his palm. Please, the merchant says. Something else today? You still have ten gold pieces? Let's take the musical pipe. Or a leather bag. One of the other sounds pretty good. We're carrying a purse right now, and I'm not sure that our Gucci sends the right message to those that would rob us. Let's take the musical pipe. You pick up a bamboo pipe off the table carved with split reed and six finger holes. What use is this? Are you selling off your infant toys? Three gold pieces, the merchant says, and I can't promise you that it has any magic, but it, way, it might well cheer you up at night. You place the pipe to your lips and blow a few clear, sweet notes. The merchant nods. It's a well-made little thing, don't you agree? Sure. I think that's it for me right now. We'll leave the rest. Thank you, you declare. I've seen enough. The merchant nods his head. Please, do visit us again. When you get to your feet and take leave of the merchant, just outside the doorway in the sunshine, you pause to examine what you've acquired. Swing the broadsword in the middle of town, because that's obviously safe. You swing the broadsword left, then right. It is a fine weapon indeed and will make you more powerful in battle. You are pleased at the bargain that you have struck. You head out of Cantapani and along the path to the Shamutanti Hills. I think we're just about out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me for the first episode of Sorcery! An exclamatory sort of game. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. I'm having a blast with this so far. This is a really cool little game. I like it a lot. Bye, everybody!